good morning students um, my name is nandini lecturer in mechanical engineering so i am dealing the subject of a basic thermodynamics in that the first chapter is the fundamentals of thermodynamics and perfect gas laws the, so the main objective of today's class is the definition of thermodynamics thermodynamic system thermodynamic properties state path and process quasi static process reversible process and thermodynamic cycle so first coming to the what is thermodynamics so the the name itself indicates thermo means heat dynamics means so all of you know that the dynamics means motion so heat plus motion is nothing but the thermodynamics so coming to again once again i will repeat what is thermodynamics so thermodynamics means the science deals with the conversion of heat energy into mechanical energy and the properties of the system is called thermodynamics the term thermo means heat dynamics means motion uh, this conversion is based on a certain law generally known as law of thermo so example i am taking i taking that metallic rod and heating on one side after some time the other end will also heat why because this so heat is transforming from one place to another place in a span of a short time another example is so when you touch the stove when you touch the stove boy touched the hot stove by mistake and feels the stove very hot why this because so thermal energy is transferring from thermal energy is transferring from the stove to the hand and coming to the second case here when the boy have a feeling cold on handling the ice in his hand big here the reason happening the piece of ice in a case is reversed because your hand is warmer than ice so thermal energy is passed out of your hand uh, from these two examples what you can say heat always flow from a higher temperature to lower temperature and heat flows due to temperature difference between two objects so the first heat always flows from higher temperature to lower temperature in the first case at the stove is a higher temperature and the boy hand is a lower temperature so heat is flowing from the stove to the boy's hand and coming to the second case the boy and the in his hand he is holding some ice but here the heat is transferring from the hand to the hand to the ice hand to the ice means our body having the our body is warmer than the ice so heat is flowing from the higher temperature to the lower temperature i think but the heat flows due to temperature difference between objects and in general in engineering applications we use this a thermal power plant thermal power plant will produce the electrical energy by converting the coal or oil into the electrical energy and in automobiles also we can use it is a heat energy is converted into work energy which drives the vehicles so in general applications and in the engineering applications uh, also um, we can use the thermodynamics only general applications rise the temperature of water in kettle cool our room on a hot humid day heat up our room on a cold winter night and coming to the thermodynamic system thermodynamic system we basically will learn what is thermodynamics now this is a thermodynamic system so what is thermodynamic system in this thermodynamic system it mainly consists of a system boundary and surrounding and universe the region in the space that contained matter whose behavior is to be investigated is called thermodynamic system so the behavior of the whatever the matter contained in the space 
that behavior we can investigate it is called the thermodynamic system. So now is a blank, uh, is a white screen you are seeing it as a universe. In this universe, I am drawing one circle, one circuit. I am separating that the, I am separating the universe. I am drawing a, so drawing a circle. So means system that the circle part, whatever the circle inside the called system outside is called the surrounding and we, uh, is there a line between the system and surrounding is called a system boundary. So whatever the matter inside the inside the body is called system, outside the uh, system is called surrounding and which separates the system and surrounding is called a system boundary what is the surrounding means the region in the space that contain matter whose behavior is to be investigated is called the thermodynamic system and referred to as a simply as a system and the system enclosed by a boundary outside the boundary is called the surroundings outside the boundary is called the surroundings these so this system classified is into three types. One is a closed system, second one is open system and third one is isolated system. So that the name itself indicates a closed means this is the same example we take. Take one beaker inside the liquid and close it with a cap. It is a closed the closed system. Open system means the flask without beaker is called open system. Isolated system means to the flask I am insulated with a one material is called an isolated system. So first coming to the closed system. Closed system. In this closed system so only energy transactions will involve. No mass transactions, no mass transactions are not possible in the closed system because we closed the flask we close it the flask so observe that the flask we are only heat energy heat energy transactions only going on with the heat in and heat out heat is into the system heat out to the surroundings so this a closed system contains a fixed quantity of a matter and has no mass transfer across the boundary only energy transfer may take place across a system boundary so uh, there's a two parameters are there here one is heat and mass so the for the closed system only heat heat in into the system heat into the surroundings heat in and heat out and there is no mass transfers across the boundary you can clearly understand so what is the closed system is only energy transactions or the heat energy transactions only in the surroundings no mass transfer it takes place in the closed system next one second one what is the second one is an open system open system means both is open system so in the open system for the same flask i removing the cap i am removing the cap and i am giving the heat and some vapors are coming out here both the heat and both the heat and the mass transfers are the takes place open system is a one permits the transfer of matter and energy across the boundary energy across the boundary uh, here one point you also uh, to note that so whatever the matter enters and whatever the matter enters or leaves may be equal may not be equal may be equal or may not be equal the mass confined within the boundary may change or it may be a constant here both the mass and the heat are both are changing here heat in heat out mass in and mass out whereas in an open system only heat and heat transfer is only taking place and mass is a constant so this is the difference between the open system and in the cool next coming to the isolated system isolated the name itself indicates is an isolated means is the no interactions between the system and the surrounding so it has a fixed mass and energy and if there is no mass and energy transfers across the system. This one is a no heat transfer and no mass transfer 
we are insulating with a one uh, one uh, thermo flask like a thermo flask so thermo flask is not a completely isolated system for the particular time only particular time if you pour the, the hot water or hot water it will stay like that only so there is no heat transfer there is no mass coming with the, uh, for the three open system closed system isolated system so the two parameters mass and heat in the open system there is only mass and heat transfer in the closed system heat only heat transfer uh, heat transfer is there no, no mass transfer in isolated system no heat transfer no mass transfer so thermodynamic system is mainly divided into three types open system closed system and an isolated system so so closed system is nothing but the uh, is a one involves only the energy transactions with surroundings thus a closed system contains only a fixed quantity of a matter and has no mass transfer across its boundary means only energy may flow across the system boundary so the for example we consider the gas contained in a cylinder is an a good example of the closed system in in this case the boundary itself uh, the boundary means uh, piston piston itself change the position as when the gas expands or contracts when the gas expands or the contracts this is the best example for the closed system so once again i am telling about the closed system so closed system is the one that involves only energy transactions with surroundings thus a closed system contains a fixed quantity of a matter and has no mass transfer across its boundary boundary on only energy may flow across the system boundary only energy energy means heat heat only heat transfer in stake space no mass transfer is takes place in the closed system only heat transfer is takes place no mass transfer is there best example is a, the gas contained in the cylinder best example is a gas contained in the cylinder in that cylinder we have a piston the piston is moving up and down from tdc to bdc bd to tdc itself as a gas expands when the piston moves from one position to other position and contracts when piston moves from one position to another position this and the mass is a constraint in that only and mass is a constant in the cylinder this is the example for the closed system and coming to the open system so in the open system it permits only if the permits both mass and the heat 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 means nothing but the energy across the boundary uh, the rate at which the matter enters matter means whatever the mass enters and leaves may or may not be equal or may be equal the mass may be confined with a boundary may change or it may be constant may be constant uh, in engineering applications the examples of the open system is a uh, flow of a steam flow of a steam through the nozzle and flow of air through the compressor are the examples of a open system what are the examples uh, in the open system means flow of a steam through the nozzle and the flow of air in the compressor are the examples of a open system and coming to the isolated system coming to the isolated system isolated system is a one that involves no transactions with the surroundings thus it will not permit the transfer of both the matter and energy across the boundary so here there is a no mass transfer and there is no heat transfer across the boundary and it is totally unaffected by the changes in the surroundings a uh, changes in the surroundings so if you take a pan containing a hot water kept in a isolated box kept in a isolated box and a thermo flask containing a fluid are the examples of a isolated system the universe can be considered as an a isolated system the universe best uh, uh, the universe can be considered as an a isolated system so here are the 
three are the thermodynamic system. First one is a closed system, second one is open system, third one is a isolated system. So the two parameters mass and the heat. In the open system, there is a mass and heat are there. In the closed system, no mass transfer, only heat transfer is there. Uh, in isolated system, no mass and no heat. So I hope that all the students will understand what is an open system, closed system and an isolated system. So first one is the intensive properties or intensionic properties. These are independent of the mass of the substances. These are the independent of the mass of the system. So uh, intensive properties is a clear concept. Uh, to understand the intensive properties means if you consider an amount of a matter, if you consider an amount of a matter which has a uniform temperature and, uh, and we divided into different parts, different parts or example so two parts. So say take a one, uh, one amount of a matter and divided into the two parts. The mass of the whole is the sum of the masses of the parts means for the first one it is a m1 in second one it is a m2 their sum means m1 plus m2 is equal to m means overall mass overall mass is equal to the sum of the two parts m1 plus m2 is equal to m and like that is a volume overall volume also so overall volume is v and the sum of the volumes are v1 and v2 so volume v is equal to v1 plus v2 volume v is equal to V1 plus V2 and like this the temperature but the temperature is not same in the intensive properties. The temperature of the whole is not the sum of the temperature of the parts and it is the same for the each part. It is the same for the each part. So mass and the volume are the extensive but the temperature is an, an intensive property but the temperature is an intensive property. Whereas as a mass and the volume are depends upon the depends upon as a mass is depends upon volume is depend upon the mass. So these are the dependent of the mass of the substance is called the intensive properties and independent of the mass of the substance is called an extensive properties. So examples for the extensive properties are the pressure, density, specific volume, thermal conductivity, temperature specific gravity and surface tension uh, and next so coming to the extensive property the extensive intensive property so they are dependent on the mass of the substance example mass enthalpy internal energy weight entropy etc are the examples of the extensive property so mathematically also we can write like this intensive property is equal to extensive property divided by mass divided by mass because intensive properties are independent on the mass so the property which is divided by the mass means there is a no mass and mass are the cancer so that is a independent on the mass is nothing but the intensive property that is nothing but the intensive property so for the is the density you can consider as a density density is equal to what is the density density is equal to mass by volume density is equal to mass by volume so what is an intensive property instant intensive property is equal to extensive property divided by mass so here we are taking this is a intensive property as a density we are taking as a intensive property so mass by volume extensive properties by mass here mass and mass cancel so density is a independent on a mass independent on the mass here so it is called as an intensive property intensive property like that and uh, uh, specific volume is also an, an intensive property specific volume is nothing but the 1 by v it is also independent on the mass so it is called as an intensive property intensive some examples of the intensive properties boiling point color temperature luster hardness are the examples of intensive properties volume mass size weight and length are the 
extensive properties. So, here is so next is the state path and the process. So, state is nothing but the, uh, the condition in the state means refers the condition of the system at which it exit. So, the state of the system is described with the properties such as temperature, pressure, volume, density, etc. is called the state of the system, state of the system. Two independent properties are sufficient to represent the state of the system. Means, if you consider the pressure and the volume, um, draw the P, uh, pre, uh, PV diagram, means pressure and volume diagram. So, pressure P1 to V1, pressure P1 volume V1 changes its states to P2 to V2. So, changing the points from P1 to P2 is called one state to another state. P2 to another, T V1 to V2 is the another state. This is called the state. Next. So, the series of a states through which the system passes during the change of the state is called the path. So, uh, initials, uh, so, initial state is P1, final state is the P2. So, P1, we will draw uh, uh, P1 to P2, so here is the diagram. So, initial state to diagram represents from initial state to final state, this line represents the path means arrow represents so going from initial stage to final stage the arrow represents the path so the path describes the infinite number of a states that occur when a system undergoes a particular process of from a one state to another state so the line joining the line joining the series of a states through which the system passes in going to the initial state to final state is called the path the next coming to the process is used to denote the change or in the system in the state of the system in the a system undergoes a process where it changes from a one state to the another so thermodynamic process are usually investigated by a pv diagram or the T pv or ts diagrams hmm. next coming to the quiastatic process this is nothing but square static process means static means equilibrium, quasic means uh, slowly, slowly. So the process involved in a um, involved in such a manner that the system is in equilibrium or nearly to the equilibrium from initial stage to final state. So the process is called quasi static process. So the process during which the state remains almost in equilibrium or in equilibrium from one state to the another state is called a quasi static process so here i'm i'm considering here i'm considering one uh, cylinder in that cylinder is a piston is a piston and in the inside the piston some gas is there so outside here the diagram represents is the system initial state and the inside the gas is called the system boundary and the final state so, consider a system initially is in a equilibrium as it weighs on the piston just balances upward force, uh, balances the upward force by uh, balance upward force exiting by the gas. If all the weights are removed suddenly, if all the weights are removed suddenly, the piston will move rapidly up to it stops. Means the system changes from initial state to final state but the intermediate states are not in equilibrium and hence the process is not quasi static. So, uh, uh, once again I will repeat. So, first the system is initially in equilibrium as the weights are on the piston just balance the upward force, uh, just balances upward force. If all the weights are removed suddenly, if all the weights are removed suddenly, the piston will move up rapidly. Uh, the piston move up rapidly up to the final state. The system changes here the system changes from initial state to final state but the intermediate states are not in equilibrium and this, this process is not quasi static. Uh, if consider the second case 
the process in quasi static process when it becomes a quasi static process means the same weights remove in a small magnitude one by one then the piston moves slowly upwards up to it final state at a, a final state means intermediate points see, see the pv diagram in the intermediate points this is double line in indicates this are the slowly we are removing the weights so first point second point third point four five six seven eight like this here we are removing the weights equally and that it's not moving the from uh, suddenly from initial state to final state um, instantly means equilibrium states it, if you are removing the load in equilibrium states means one, double lines indicates are the equilibrium states at any instant the upward position of the piston the system is nearly to the thermodynamic equilibrium so this is the intermediate states between the initial and final states are in will be in equilibrium and observe that the double lines of the each two points are in the same distance such a process is called a quasi static process quasi is nothing but the meaning slow static means equilibrium so if you take the, the cylinder inside the piston and where they put the weight on the set from initial stage to final state if you remove the weights all the weight suddenly the piston goes from initial to final state in single in single state in single time uh, so there is no uh, um, removed uh, rapidly it go and it stop it means the intermediate states are not in equilibrium the intermediate states are not in equilibrium whereas coming to the quasi static process means if you remove the weight slowly in uh, if you remove the slowly one by one the piston moves slowly up to its stop at to its state so it reaches the initial stage to final state and that intermediate points are all are in, in a equilibrium states so how will you define the quasi static process means it is a process involved that the system is in equilibrium or nearly to the equilibrium from initial state to the final state then the process is called an a quasi static process reversible process a process that can be reversed so that the system restored to its initial state is called a reversible process so the word the word itself telling to the reversible process the process can be reversed so that the system can restore its uh, to its initial state is called a reversible process thus the reversible process follows the same exact the same path so uh, the system should be a reversible means it must be a quasi static process and then the what is the thermodynamic cycle so thermodynamic cycle is a sequence of a thermodynamic process that begins and ends at the same state and that the system is returned to its initial state if you start the process at one and it again will return a uh, uh, final state and again after completing the cycle also both the initial and the final states are the so here i'm considering the pv diagram state point one is one and two are the states and arrow represents the path and a is the process so one two two is one process again two to one is a again another process b represents a path here here we observe that, that the system changes from state one to state two by process a so system changes from state one to state two by process a and system changes from and and return to initial state from two to one by the process b so the uh, sequence of the process a and b constitute a thermodynamic cycle so the whole cycle means one a b and one this represents the thermodynamic process so so in this class totally we learn about the what is thermodynamics thermodynamic system and thermodynamic properties state path process quasi static process and reversible process thermodynamic cycle so these are the topics we learn today so in the next class we discuss about the pressure temperature volume and standard conditions standard conditions means stp and the ntp stp conditions and the ntp conditions because of a temperature pressure 
and energy forms energy forms means heat and work how heat conversion and work symbols in next class we will discuss about so thank you so much